much we have been part of changing this discourse. So you have things like the discussion about Israeli apartheid, a word that was never allowed in the same sentence as the word Israel, until a few years ago, suddenly President Carter wrote a book. But President Carter wouldn't have written that book 10 years ago, and his publisher wouldn't have published it 10 years ago, Be but people like all of us The, the votes last year, in, two, uh, in 2008, when all of the Jewish lobby organizations that support Israel, as well as some of the Christian lobby organizations that fund is Israel, were telling their members, don't vote for Barack Obama. He's not good enough for Israel. And you know what? At the end of the day, 78% of Jewish voters voted for Barack Obama because those lobbies don't have the same power they once did. They still have a lot of money, they still have a lot of power, but they don't have as much as they used to. It's changed. So I think those are the things that we have to look at. The polls are very clear. You know, President Obama's own party is saying 63% of Democrats say that Israeli settlements were built on stolen, Palis uh, no, not stolen, expropriated Palestinian land, and they all should be torn down and the land returned to the original owners. Hello? 63% of his own party. That's huge. So we have to keep up that pressure in a way that forces the people in power to start to take it seriously, because it becomes too expensive politically if they don't. That's the hard job that we have ahead. Parcel of a much broader change, a much more fundamental change in this society to reorient uh, our government spending away from endless warfare towards meeting the needs of people in our country and around the world. Are there other questions? Would you like to raise your hand? Uh, I didn't. Okay, I'm sorry, there you are. I wanted to ask that move. You said your father decided to move out of Palestine in 1948. Was that true? Or he didn't, he no, he didn't decide. No, That's he true. was forced. I just no, I mean, if he, if he wanted to just have a, to go out to Lebanon because Lebanon is a beautiful country and get married to my mom, that's fine. But it didn't happen, no. He was forced, like with the rest of his family. There's a new novel out called Mornings in Janine, and it's the story of a, it's narrated by a woman, and it begins when she's a child and when the bombings begin. And it's her story as she ages and becomes an adult. So it's well worth reading. I want your question. You want to stand up and speak in a loud voice? Bye, there. I, I might have this wrong, but I heard, I think, on alternative radio, on Amy, you know, our KKFI community radio, that the United States is irrelevant. And I think that was the best thing I had heard all year long that gave me hope. That we're irrelevant. The rest of the world's going along with peacemaking. We keep trying to pitch our weapons, trying to manufacture fights. And, and if that were the case, I would be so elated to know that we are irrelevant. Did anyone else hear that? It was an Oslo, Norway, Norwegian philosopher who said this. <laughs> you know, one of the things I learned, I learned when I came to this country is that uh, the freedom of uh, speech and the freedom of uh, this and freedom of that. But I was amazed at the what happened to the flotilla show. CNN has nothing to do with it. I mean, I'm, I'm still uh, uh, confused. Are we in a free society? How could there be no coverage whatsoever for these events? And I agree with you, yeah. We, we become like irrelevant, and that's true. So I, I, I and this one of the things was, I was gonna ask, uh, even Josh, but maybe we should, we should direct our, also part of our effort to the media that they need to be fair and balanced, not Fox, though. 
uh, so that then they can cover these things and people can wake up to the realities that goes on. All right. Ah, David, you have a good question, I'm sure. Yeah, thank you, uh, I'm just wondering uh, how, I'm not from Kansas City, uh, New York, I'm guessing our share might be a little lar larger. Uh, how do we get the money back? I'm wondering if we could go to the mayor and just say, you know, there's $78 million out there that uh, could go to really good work here in Kansas City. And it's one thing to send something to Obama, but I'd love to hear a little bit more about how can we bring these cards to the mayor and the city council and say, your money's being stolen and going for debt instead of the human needs right here. And um, David, did you bring any of your books with you tonight? Tomorrow? Tomorrow, and I have started my book that David wrote with Philip Miller. And it's excellent. And I, I think we all have to um, just wonder how we keep adding to the military. We don't reduce. If we reduce, we know they're going to go where? Afghanistan. Read the book, be one of them. I, I, what are your ways for getting the people together that ought to hear about this and won't even read the article, won't even protest when all the editorials, the letters to the editor and the Kansas City Star are one-sided? What are the ways? What should we be doing? To answer David, our mayor would like to keep the $78 million, too. Um, Kansas City, like all other cities, are, could use more money as well. But I think some of the same tactics that we use on a national level also work locally. Um, he probably doesn't have a whole lot of control over keeping that money either. But I think keeping him informed is one of the ways. Um, I think relationship building is a real key to making things happen, uh, whether that's, I was in a conversation earlier, the interreligious relationship building makes a big difference. It also makes a difference if you can do that with your mayor, your city council, and what have you. Now, I will confess that our mayor is not the most popular man in town. Um, he's gotten a little better. Um, so I think, again, and find your friends in the newspaper, um, you can get letters to the editor from the other side. Uh, maybe not quite as many, but you can get them, but it helps if you know somebody down there. So I think those are some of the things we can do. One of the things that you notice that in our uh, community that uh, we have a, an email list, and uh, Fadi is the kind of moderator on it, and he sent in an email about meeting with your congressman in their break in the summer. Um, there was one meeting uh, with, uh, I think, uh, McCaskey, and then there was an exchange between the group uh, and Emmanuel Cleaver. I think this is one of the ways we could uh, request a meeting and, and, you know, voice our opinion. These are people, and they can be they can change their minds, but also we can bring some votes. In my presentation, I, I failed to mention this, that one of the ways that WIC cannot influence is that the WIC National Association doesn't have many votes like the uh, APAC, but we do. We can register to vote, and then we can vote, and we can tell the mayor, I mean, not the mayor or the congressman, this is our vote, we're not going to give it to you next time. Isn't that what APAC does? So we can do something like this. I mean, I love APAC. I don't know, I just keep saying that. Ah, uh, Fatty, I can turn down your question. What is it, please? Sure, Fadi asked uh, for some updates on the BDS movement. BDS stands for Boycott, Divestment, and Sanctions. And it's a worldwide grassroots movement uh, initiated through a call from more than one.